racing down the highway, having me some fun. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back. Okay, day three on Project Fox Dog, and I think it's going to be lathe video number seven. This is kind of a combined video. I'm going to make something on the lathe for the project, which is what it's all about, and therefore I'll put this video in both playlists. So if you're following both, you can keep up with them, you won't miss one. So here we are today, I've got a mountain handlebars. I want to take these ape hangery things off. I want to put on some drag bars with some tall straight risers. Night train styly, I think, if that makes sense. And they need to be about six, six and a half inches tall, but I don't want the big heavy Harley Davidson steel ones. I've got some bar stock aluminium. I'm gonna make the stanchions. I've got some aluminium clamps, one inch for the bars. They're really cool black tech bike pass ones, and they're gonna look fantastic on the bike. They have a cunning way that they're mounted to give the nut at the bottom and no mount at the top. So I really like that. That's another reason I wanna use them, but it means I've gotta make something else for it. So today is the first bit of fabrication. As soon as day three, we're straight into making things for this project. It truly is gonna be a quicker build than the others, just a makeover. So today, handlebars, eyes down for a full house. Let's get stuck in. Excellent. Now it's got the top yoke stripped to its underpants and ready to go. Now these are superb, they've been replaced along with so much else on the bike, so I don't have to think about those, I can just put the new risers straight on top of those rubber bushes. Fantastic. Okay, the next thing, start making some measurements. Right. Just to double check before I cut the stud, that'll be, that's about literally a face each end longer than I want it to be. That is more or less the length, so we're going to use that as a guide. And that will go on there. The riser itself will go on there. And the bolt's got to go through right through the lot, out the bottom, through a nut, and have a little bit of spare so you get all the threads completely covered. So putting that on there, it is honestly at least eight inches, which is what 205 mil roughly, that needs to be long. It's a quite a long old bolt and I don't think you'd have bought one easily. You can always make one. Right, here we are. Now I have bolts that I can use as opposed to some studding with some nuts on. I can now turn them heads down in the lathe so they look like them heads. Let's get on with it.
that's the standard tech riser. Now made eight inch versions of that. Same thing, locks down inside, that will lock solid, but now they're long enough to go through the riser that I've got planned and the yoke and a nut and a washer and a little bit for luck. There we are. So now I've made the bolts, whatever you'd call them. Now I can make the stanchions. Okay, I want to show you something before I go any further that I bought this week that you may want to stick in your Christmas stocking or on your Christmas list so it appears in your Christmas stocking because it's a great little tool and it really will help you if you're doing fabrication. That's me clamp that I'm going to use, black anodized billet aluminium, and that's my piece of bar stock. That's 34 mil, that's 28 mil. Well, it's 28.09 to be exact. That's its exact diameter there so that when I put it on, if I machine this down to 28.09, and when I put it on top, it'll look cool, because it'll be exactly the same diameter. Excellent. Now to find out that that was 28.09, I had to very, very carefully take my very sharp vernier caliper, my stainless steel Hilke caliper, open it up. I've got to find, because this is curved on both sides, I have to find the widest point. So come in from this area, Bring that down carefully onto there and gently touch against it, line it up, and there it is, 28.07. A little bit different this time, right. So 28.07, that's what it measures on that. And what I did, it's always worrying me, I always have to measure parts like this, or chrome parts, or polished parts, or worse still, painted parts that are even more vulnerable. And I'm worried about that. So I said to the guys at Recon, on the stuff, on the list of tools that you do, is there something like a soft jaw that I could put on me jaws of my caliper, like a little cover? Because you can zero that at any point. It can be there, and I can press that and zero it. So if I put soft jaws in there that made them fatter, then it would still be accurate. You just zero it before you use it. Piece of cake. And they said, no, there are no soft jaws for these. Nothing like it. But there is one of these. Now this came to me, put it back in its little packet, there it is. That's a Weha Diomax. It's fundamentally a plastic vernier caliper. Um, I had to smile when first I heard that, because I've never heard of a plastic one, because obviously it's a precision instrument, and it makes you think, how accurate can it be if it's plastic? But it is. It seriously is. It's not nylon or injection molded plastic, it's made from 50% fiberglass and other plastics. And I'm told by the guys at Recon that actually they're really, really accurate. Uh, they're no metal parts whatsoever. It's a dial type caliper, just a different setup. The digital ones are probably the easiest to read because they give you the exact size. But these are just as easy. A bit common sense, you have centimeter markers. This is a metric one. So you have centimeter markers on the top and the dial represents one centimeter. So each of the numbered increments is one millimeter and in between them are 10 more. So it's 0.1 of a millimeter accurate. So let's measure my bar clamp and see if it still comes to 28.07, I think it was. You zero these by coming in on the dial and you can turn the dial by hand like that. Let me just do it, hang on. There you are, you just close it up, turn the dial and that sets it accurately wherever it is. That's also good for if it's open and you then want to zero it to measure the difference between something, you can zero it at any point. But bringing that into zero, there it is. Absolutely bang on. Okay, there it is on zero. Gonna open that up. Now when you bring it down on your anodized vulnerable aluminium part, it's just with confidence. Soft plastic edges. No, not soft. Hard plastic edges, but there's no way they're gonna to touch that. That's anodized aluminium, and they probably wouldn't even hurt a painted finish. So coming in on that, there's a little ratchet wheel, so you don't over tighten it, because obviously being plastic, it's gonna be flexible where the stainless steel isn't. So coming in on that, set that, and there we are. Let down before I drop it. Um, 28, so two centimeters there, and then the dial gives me eight point about 09, look at that. 
that is as accurate as the stainless steel one was. I'm really impressed with that. Now, I saw them online for various prices. Uh, there's a link underneath to this, I put it in the description. They're anything from about 28 quid up to 38 quid. I've seen them advertised. You know what these kind of tools are like, they're available anywhere. These are made in Switzerland by a company for Weha under license, but they are Weha quality in every way. It doesn't come with a box, a little bit disappointing because any precision instrument should really go in a box, but it does come with this thingy, which is kind of part of the packaging. That goes like that. Oops. That goes like that. That snaps on there. So you can put a nail on the top there and you can at least keep it on the wall safe next to your machine. So it's handy when you need it. But there we are. If that helps you, I was really impressed. I didn't know that there was such a thing as a plastic vernier caliper and I'm really happy there is because now, like I said, I can measure vulnerable anodized aluminium parts, chrome parts, painted parts and so on to the same accuracy as my aluminium Hilka vernier caliper and not scratch things while I'm doing it. There you go. Link underneath in the description. Let's get on with it.
Okay, at this point, that would be very much the night train vibe, flat drag bars, but I'm not so sure. Now that's very traditional and very done to death, and I do like it, I like it a lot, and that will work. But I have an option, it's just an option, but I do have an option on something else that's a lot more modern, a lot more up to date, and that is what I'm trying to do with the bike after all. So I'm just gonna offer up some other bars that I've got, I'm gonna clamp them on, and if you like, you can give us an opinion, see what you think. That's a standard drag bar, one inch Harley Davidson drag bar, standard stuff, same as you'd see on a night train or any of the other custom style bikes, XL 1200C, that is the same thing, straight drag bar on high rises, but check this out. So there we go, that's a different look. Um, outlaw style, club style, call it what you like, I absolutely love that. Tall risers and regular motocross style bars. These are 28mm Tech Bike Parts fat bars, that's a fat bar conversion with the clamps that you can buy for your Triumph. So if you've got Triumph Bonneville, Scram or any of that, you can buy this setup for your bike. Seven eighths on the ends, I'd have to make some little shells for the controls and that's nothing, piece of cake I can do, that's just some sheet metal and I can fit all the controls onto this. Now obviously with the fact that these are six and a half inch risers and it only had one inch risers before and I've got this lift here, the actual controls are not much lower than they were. Once I put things like the clutch on, I just reroute the cabling and that will all fit without shortening any of the wiring or cables or anything like that. So that's going to be a great cost effective way to do it. I love the look. What do you think? Comments underneath if you like. It's all about opinions. But I'm going to roll with it for now. I can always go back to these if I like. Standard, more traditional drag bar look. I still love that. It's so much more modern. And after all, that's what I said I wanted right from the start. Little nose going, I'm gonna fabricate and use the sheet metal from the old Street Fighter tail, the original one. I'm not gonna throw that away. It's up there on the top, I'm gonna to cut it up, cut a hole in it so it fits over the headlight, and make a, a stark, sleek, curved, little steel nose cone on the front, something really smart. And what color the whole bike goes, I didn't be dictated by the style and the lines of the bike at the end. It probably might end up black, I don't know, but we shall see, that's all for a long, long time in the future. This is just a dry build, just swinging it on for now, see what it looks like. I'm gonna leave it there for a few days, see if it grows on me or not. I love it at the moment, I may not do that tomorrow, and I may go back to drag bars, we don't know. Anyway, that's it for now, loads of fun today. Seriously enjoyed the fabrication. Great to be able to mash up two subjects, put the lathe video in with a build video. That's all what it's about. Thank you for watching, take it easy, ride safe. See you for the next one. Racing down the highway, having me some fun. Cop pulled me over, said, Boy, what have you done? I said, I killed old Jack Daniels and I left him there to die. Now, if you don't mind, that you like to get high. He said, Son, you're in trouble. I'm gonna take you in. I said, You do what you gotta do, then I started to grin. He said, What's so funny, boy? I said, Sound like a country song to me.